Okay, I'm titling this The Ultimate Reason to Be an Atheist because sooner or later, as an atheist, you're going to find out that a lot of the atheist arguments fall flat. So I'm going to give you a new one. I've got a lot more um, audio that I've done on this, uh, but let's just start with this. The ultimate reason to want to be an atheist is because of the way the Bible says you actually live the spiritual life. I'm going to just give it to you straight and then I'm going to tell you why all the other reasons for being an atheist are wrong. The ultimate reason to want to be an atheist is that the way you live the spiritual life is what I said before about why I support atheism. you got to ask the ceiling. You guys already don't like that answer. I understand that. We Christians don't like it either. Okay? And here's the reason why. Right there, highlighted in blue, in Greek, Hupakuo. If you look over in the lower left-hand corner, it's translated, mistranslated, really. Obedience. Okay? That's not what it means. This is why I say... you should you know, be an atheist. Hupo, that's in Greek, it means under, underneath, okay? When you got hupo and then the verb that it's attached to um, is begins with a vowel, then it just becomes hoop, okay? That verb there is akuo, it means to listen, to hear, to give a hearing to. You're beginning to get my drift here? You got to be listening. You stand under, that's what hoop means. You stand under what you hear. Now, I don't think this is going to be too unfamiliar to you. The whole lot of Christians on YouTube and everywhere else, from time immemorial, and before they were Christians, there were Jews, okay, saying, I have heard the voice of God. God spoke to me. God laid this on my heart. God gave me revelation. God caused me to know. And in the Old Testament and in the New, the same kind of phraseology is used all over. Hear the word of the Lord. Okay? Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Shema means to listen, hear. Okay? So Paul's just translating it with the Greek equivalent. You understand? You have to be constantly hearing the Bible and you're constantly in your mind looking for God to give you feedback. That's your whole life as a Christian. That was the life for the Jews. Okay? And for Jews who are Messianic Jews today, that's their life now. Every single person who believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah has to live according to this verse. Obedience is the translation. That's not what it means. It means to stand under, I mean, it comes to mean obedience, stand under the hearing. Hearing of what? Hearing of Bible taught. Hearing in your mind. The whole spiritual life is lived inside your head. In your mind, you're listening for what God might be telling you. And you as an atheist will rightly, totally rightly ask us, well, how do you know you're not delusional? Because as far as you're concerned, we are. And the only answer we can give you is that you have to go through it yourself to understand. It's a whole higher plane of living. I can tell when another Christian is in the spirit or out of the spirit. I can tell when another Christian who's posting to me is saying something that's consonant with what God says or not. And it takes years and years and years and years of doing the thing you see highlighted in blue every single day, all day long. In other words, as far as you guys are concerned, it's a totally delusional life because you're living it entirely in your head. Now, there are a thousand Bible verses that go with this one. But this one is like the most bald. Taking every thought captive to 
and it's really standing under hearing of Christ. Obedience is, is, a, is a piss poor translation. Taking every thought captive is indeed what the Greek says. Okay, I'm trying to keep it simple. Okay, to the standing under hearing of Christ. And this of here is either subjective or objective genitive, probably plenary, meaning that it's the it's standing under the hearing belonging to Christ or standing under the hearing with reference to Christ, which means the whole Bible. It's shorthand for the whole Bible, Old and New Testament. Okay, so now you have your reason for wanting to be an atheist. If you believe that Jesus Christ paid for your sins ever once in your life. This is the life you're supposed to be living all the time. In your head. Now I got news for you atheists. Most of you are already saved. That's another thing that a Christian can tell. A Christian who's schooled in this every thought captive. A Christian who's schooled in this every thought captive has a higher perceptive ability. Okay, it's not supernatural exactly, but it's not natural either. Because when you're Christian, you lose your brains. The minute you believe in Christ, you lose your own brains and you have to get his. And that's why I call myself brain out. My brains are outside me. They're in the Holy Spirit. I have to use 1 John 1, 9 all the time in order for this to be happening. Mistranslated obedience. I can't hear God if I'm not using 1 John 1, 9. Well, guess what? Most of you atheists are saved. That's why I'm not trying to convert you. You believed when you were kids. It shows in the way you talk. It shows in your eyes. It shows in your mannerisms. It shows in the way you make your posts. If you really never, ever once believed in Christ, you wouldn't be hostile. Sorry. A person who's a true atheist is, is indifferent. He's not hostile. He wouldn't be on YouTube saying rah rah atheism. In other words, Richard Dawkins is saved. Probably Christopher Hitchens is saved. I'd have to listen to him talk more. Um, probably the what is it? Sam Harris is saved. All your militant, hostile atheists. They got that way because they they were Christians when they were kids. They at some point believed Jesus Christ paid for their sins, and at some point, like King Heathen talks about. They found out that, you know, they prayed to Christ and he didn't answer. So they got all ticked off. And I, I, I'm not blaming them for that. That's a phase every Christian goes through. Okay? You have to weather it by this phrase in this verse. God tests you. All right, fine. You're an atheist now. You think, you know, that it's flying spaghetti monster. That's okay. I'm not out to convert you. In fact, I'm giving you one more reason to want to be an atheist. Because if you're a Christian, this is your lifestyle right there. Every single thought you have to monitor. And you have to stand under the hearing of Christ. Which means the entire Bible. You have to live according to it. That's why we quote the Bible to you. Because it is not our authority that we're using. We're using the Bible's authority. You don't believe in that authority, but we do. This is our due diligence. We have to disclose this to you. Whether you like it or not or believe it or not, that's your business. It's not our business to convert you. That's between God and you, not between you and us. Okay? Because here's what we got to do. We have to take every thought captive ourselves to Christ. I'm responsible to you indirectly. When I talk, my I have to be thinking toward God the whole time. Okay, Dad, am I supposed to say this? Am I supposed to say that? Am I speaking accurately? Please make sure that the audience understands what I'm saying because there's no way you're going to understand it if God doesn't enable it. I don't even understand it if the God doesn't enable it. That's why I'm a brain out. My brains are outside me. You understand? Now you see you have the ultimate reason to want to be an atheist. Right there, highlighted in blue. That's what your life has to be as a Christian. 99.9% .9 of Christians are not living that way. That's why they're so stupid. Because Christian and crazy begin with a C for a reason. Because in, unless you're using 1 John 1 9, you cannot read the Bible. Period. Ephesians 4.23 is the basis for my nickname. To remind me to use 1 John 1 9. 
Okay, so that's your ultimate reason for wanting to be an atheist. Because if you became a Christian, this is your life after you're saved. And it will be your life forever. And I bet you don't like that. Okay. Now, this is your ultimate reason for being an atheist. All the other reasons that you hear atheists talk about are all baloney. Okay? The reason they're baloney, A, number one, there's no contradiction between science and the Bible. Even the Christians are stupid about that. Go see my atheist scam videos and towards a better atheism videos where I expose that. Okay, the Bible specifically has God decreeing non-human evolution in Genesis 124. So Richard Dawkins is too dumb to live. Carl Sagan is too dumb to live. All the atheists who say that science and Bible contradict are too dumb to live because they can't read that verse. So they aren't doing their homework, so they're not good scientists. Sorry. Okay, so that wipes out, you know, one of the major claims of atheism. Oh, well, evolution is true and the Bible says it's not. Therefore, you know, the Bible is wrong and science is right. Well, I'm sorry, God decreed evolution. It says so right there in Genesis 1, 24 through 26. For man, the argument is different. For man, the argument by God is that the real you is not biology but an immaterial soul. That's why you could, you could know God. That's the only reason, because he made you directly at birth, Genesis 2, 7, and therefore he can communicate directly to you. That's how come this verse is even possible. Okay, so if you want communication from God, you got to look up at the ceiling and say, God, I don't believe you exist. That's using 1 John 1, 9 for you because you're already saved. And now you're, you're naming a problem, a sin, and then it's up to God to talk to you after that. If you want him to talk to you, he will. It will not be audible, it will be thought, see? He communicates by thought, and it's thought of the Bible. He links Bible thought together in your head. And then thoughts about your life, connections, and that's why I said, you know, do it every day for 30 days, open up the Bible, complain, yell at God, I'm, I do. You know, it's not like he doesn't know. Yell at him if you want. Well, I think you're full of shit. Yada, yada, I don't even believe you exist. That's okay. Be honest. Okay. And then he replies with thought. And you'll think you're hallucinating. So then you practice it again and again and again. And when the cleverness is way smarter than yours, that's when you'll know you're hearing from God. And you'll be able to test it in the Bible in your life and nobody will be able to believe the proof that you get i get proof of god every day like breathing oh but you'd have to cut open my head and be able to read what's going on inside my head to know that that's what i'm getting i can't communicate it to you i can communicate it to another christian and they can communicate it to me and i can tell if they're lying or not okay so here you go. Here's your reason to be an atheist. Forget the science versus Bible debate. Even the Christians are too dumb to live engaging in that. Billions of dollars have been wasted on that. Go find another argument. And if you think you find contradictions in the Bible, that's a big lie too. Any contradiction you think you found in the Bible just means you didn't study it enough and neither did the Christian arguing with you. It's, it, it, it's, it's appalling. How many arguments there are pro and con Bible where nobody's actually reading it? So once you get through the fact that evolution and science and the Bible don't conflict, then you're going to have your little, you know, your little basis for atheism taken away. And then if you go, well, the Bible contradicts. Uh, well, once you get through all those contradictions, then that basis for atheism is gone. So what do you have left? What you see highlighted in blue is what you have left. If you aren't willing to live this way in blue, which I submit is the only way to want to live, to hear from God all the time? Are you kidding? It's not religion. It's a relationship, different R. If you don't want this, then stay an atheist. 
You'll have plenty of opportunity to, you know, retrench or regroup. And besides, you're probably already saved. And if you're not already saved, once you're in hell, you'll still have an opportunity to change your mind. You won't want to, but you'll have the opportunity forever. All right, that's it. Signing off.